Greetings, everybody, from Jiva Yoga Center in Bluffton, South Carolina. I'm Shannon, this is Greg, and we are going to take you through a yoga basics practice. So let's get started on your mat in child's pose, please. Bring your big toes to touch, and have your knees wide, like the width of your mat, or like Greg is doing here, a little bit wider. Extend your arms over your head. And drop your hips back toward your heels. Rest your forehead on the floor. And make this pose feel good. I'm going to drop all your physical weight and access your breath. Take big breaths in through your nose and out through your nose. On every inhalation, feel your back expand and inflate. On every out breath, just draw your hips back toward your heels. And breath is so important in your practice. It's what gives you access into, into what's happening moment by moment. And bring a little movement, left and right, forward, back. You massage your forehead. All right, take a big, big breath in. Breathe out. Now rise up into tabletop. Stack your shoulders over your wrists, your hips over your knees. And now as you breathe in, drop your belly toward the floor and lift your collarbones and your tailbone toward the ceiling. And as you breathe out, round your spine, reverse that cat shape pose. Inhale, belly drop. Exhale, round. And Greg, go through that about five more times. And you two go through that and listen for your breath and partner it up with your movement. Start to lubricate your spine a bit. And especially as you breathe out, press your palms into the floor. Make your arms really strong and taut. Do one more round of that. Breathe in. Breathe out. Pull your belly to your spine. Now come to neutral. Neutral. Now, curl your ten toe pads under even more and send your hips back and up to down in the facing dog. You'll notice how Greg walked his hands forward a little bit. Add some space front to back between your hands and your feet and move around a little bit. Bend one knee and the other. Bend your elbows. And shake your head out a little bit. Just give up any tension in your neck, your shoulders, your jaw. Now open your two eyes and see one physical point at the back edge of your mat. Really see that point. Take a big, big breath in. Breathe out. Inhale, walk your hands to the back of your mat for right about those. Take your feet about hip distance apart. Bend your knees a lot and catch your elbows with your hands and hang in right. Sway a little bit side to side, forward back, shake out your head. Now steady your feet. Press into your big toe mounds, your baby toe mounds. Go forward, back, left and right. And a couple more breaths. Drop your head really heavy toward the floor. Breathe in. Exhale, bring your hands to the floor. Now walk forward to a high plank position. Now take a look at your hands, Greg. Make your index finger point straight ahead on 12 o'clock. And press your finger knuckles, your finger mounds, every one of them into the floor. Now lift your chin a little bit away from your chest. Tighten up your quadriceps and your triceps. And bring a little softness between your shoulder blades. 
Yeah, who said basics was easy? This isn't very easy, is it, Greg? Mm -hmm. But you stay the course, and if you start to lose your low back, you can put your knees on the mat for, for a modification. Otherwise, just hold. Stay a couple more breaths. Now grow an inch longer from your tailbone to the crown of your head. Breathe in, lengthen, and go back. Downward facing dog. Now bring some more refinement. Take a look at your hands, Greg. Spread your fingers apart across your mat. Spin the inner creases of your elbows toward the front of the rim. Relax your head even more. Now see your feet. Turn your inner ankles back. So both feet face 12 o'clock. Straight ahead. Outer ankles down. Big, big breath in. Exhale, bend your knees, look forward, and walk up to the front of your mat, ragdoll round to two. This time, take another arm variation. You can interlace your hands at your low back, or you can hold on to two ends of a strap or a towel. Now lengthen your spine to the front of the studio. Stick your bum out a little bit. Squeeze your shoulder blades into the spine. Keep the back of your neck long. Keep your bind and bow forward. And work your knuckles or your towel or strap straight up to the ceiling. Now start to shift your weight forward a bit. Hips move forward. So more weight on the balls of your feet versus your heels. Breathe out, bring your hands to the floor. Let go of your strap, put it off to the side. Walk your feet together. Make the inner edges of your toe knuckles touch and keep about two fingers distance between your heels. Ground your feet into the earth, bring your hands to your hips. Now long spine, elbows toward the sky, feel a flat back, press the floor, rise up to stand. Sweep your arms up over your head. Take a big breath in, spread out your fingers, your toes, breathe in, look up. Bring your palms together and your thumb knuckles to heart center. And we'll open with one arm. Start with a round of breath, inhale. Exhale. Inhale for om. Om. Exhale, bow forward. You can bend your knees a little bit on the way down. Bow into it. Now, lengthen to a flat back, long spine. Step to high plank pose. Pause. Move your heels forward. Get a good stretch from where your big toe mounts meet your toes. Now on an in-breath, move forward a little bit and in one piece lower all the way down to the floor. Press the tops of your feet into the mat. Press your ten finger or your ten toes toward the back of the studio. Now walk your thumbs down to your lowest rib grade. Hug your elbows into the spine line. Baby cobra, with your chest up off of the floor. Press your pelvis into the floor. Hug your outer shins in. And squeeze your shoulder blades into the spine line. Maybe you even float your palms an inch off the floor just to test if you're working your working your back strength. One more breath in. Lower your chest down. Now hug everything into the center line. Curl your toes under, Greg. And in one piece, press up the high plank. Ooh, pull and lift. Awesome. Downward facing dog. Big breath in through your nose. Open your mouth. Breathe out. Now deepen the crease in your hips by tilting your tailbone up to the ceiling. You can bend your knees as much as needed. Spin your inner thighs up to the ceiling. Spin your heels a little bit away from each other. Take a deep, deep breath in. Fill up. Empty it out completely. Be patient. Pull your belly to your spine. Look forward. Walk to the front of your mat. Lengthen to a flat back. Feet together. Bow forward. Inhale. Extended mountain. Put your arms up over your head, inflate your lungs like a helium balloon, exhale, bow forward. Lengthen to a flat back, step to high plank pose, bring your knees to the floor, 
Take a breath in. Move forward and lower all the way down to your mat. Come through a baby cobra pose. And by way of tabletop, press back, downward facing dog. Really good. Salutation A with a bit of a modification. Hold here for three deep breaths. Come back to your gaze, eyes on one point. Drishti, drishti practice, so important. Breathe in. Empty out. Look forward, walk to the front of your mat. Halfway lift, long spine. Bow forward. One more sene. Rise to stand. Fill up. Finish your in breath. Bow forward. Empty completely. Lengthen to a flat back. Step to high plank pose. Breathe in. Move forward and move to chaturanga. You could have your knees up or down. Cobra or upward facing dog if your hips are off the mat. Press back, downward facing dog. This is the magic of, of basics. You just break things down a little bit, slow it down, and then you can see where you can modify down or amplify up in every pose. Big breath in. Exhale out, look forward, walk to the front of your mat. Bring your feet together, bend your knees, chair pose, thunderbolt. Now, Greg, take a look down at your feet and move your shin bones back so you want 80% of the weight into the center of each heel. And now drop your bum down as low as you can until you feel like you're going to tip over, but you don't. Now lift your belly in and up toward your spine. Straighten your arms and breathe calmly in through your nose, out through your nose. Drop your hips another inch. Straighten your arms, take your thumbs to the back of the studio. Take one more breath in, hinge forward bow. Good heat builder. Halfway lift, downward facing dog. Step right to it, down dog. Take a full breath in. Really good, breathe out. Step your right foot forward to warrior one. Drop your back heel into your mat. Straighten your arms up over your head. Now first things first, create a strong and stable foundation and it starts with your feet. So, you could go a little wider left to right so you don't feel like you're on a tightrope between your feet. You could go longer front to back if you feel like you're getting stuck. And press the outer edge of your back foot into the floor and tighten up your back leg like crazy. Pull your quadricep up onto the thigh bone. Now drop your hips a little bit closer to your mat and lift the front of your pelvis up toward your spine. Steady your gaze. We'll hold this a couple more breaths. Straighten your arms. And work your thumbs toward the back of the studio. Take a big, big breath in. Step to downward facing dog, right to it. Now, if you want to move through a vinyasa, high, low, up, dog, down, that's always on offer. Breathe in. Exhale out. Left side, warrior one. Now have a looking. See where you place your feet. Place them with precision. Spread all your toes. Fan your fingers apart. And check in with your pelvis. Make sure you can move it a little bit left to right, forward, back, so you've got some water in your pelvis. On every exhalation, deep in the pose, drop your tailbone like a plumb line toward the floor, and at the same time, lift front of the pelvis up. Your toes are starting to bunch up, lighten them up. Now use your in-breath to grow longer through your lateral body. Lengthen from your hip bones to your armpits. Strong, straight arm. No bend in the elbow. Take one more big breath in. Full expression. Downward facing dog or a vinyasa. Always meet downward facing dog. Breathe in. Exhale. Breathe out. Couple more breaths. And know that if you need a break, a good place to come back to always is child's pose. It's an opportunity to stay on your mat, to stay in the work without just bailing on a pose. Just modify as needed.
Take a deep breath in. Exhale out, look forward. Walk to the front of your mat. We'll go through a sunbeam. Halfway lift on a one breath, one pose count. Bow forward. Chair pose, sit as low as you can. Reach high to the sky. Bow forward. Flat back. Downward facing dog. Step your right foot forward to warrior one. From the floor through your core all the way up to your fingertips. Breathe, big breath. Step to downward facing dog. Breathe out. Left foot forward, warrior one. Inhale all the way up to the top. Downward facing dog. Big breath in. Exhale out. Bring your knees to the mat, Greg, for tabletop. Take a modified three-legged dog. Extend your right leg straight back. Lower to your left forearm and make a claw with your right hand. So light on your right fingertips. Now bend your upper knee and send your upper leg to the left. You can just relax your neck and shoulders here. And then pull up into your left armpit so you're not collapsing your left shoulder. And pull your belly to your spine. Uddiyana. One more full breath in. Work your foot a little more toward the left. Breathe out. Come back up under your palms. Straighten your, your leg now. Come back up under your palms. Right leg straight back. Curl your left toes under from your core strength. Press back to three-legged dog. Big stretch. Excellent. Step through to crescent lunge and lower your back knee to the floor right away. Reach your arms up over your head. And create stability. Again, front of the pelvis up, tailbone down. Now reach your arms a little higher. Stretch your fingers. Move your thoracic spine up to your chest. Breathe in. As you breathe out, prayer twist to your right. Take a look at your front foot. Your knee is stacked directly above your ankle. Kind of wedge your left tricep past your right thigh. And now use your in breath to pull your thumb knuckles down to the center of your sternum. And use your out breath to rotate and stack your right elbow directly above your left. Now you could stay with this variation or if you want to test your strength, you could float your back knee up off of the floor. If you're going that route, you want your back leg strong and straight. It's a lot of rigor, a lot of challenge in the leg. Working your back leg straighter and straighter. Breathe in. Breathe out. Slowly place your back knee back on the floor. Bring it back to the floor. Reach your arms up, crescent lunge. Big breath in. Downward facing dog. Excellent. Inhale. Exhale. Step your right foot forward to warrior two. A little different stance than warrior one. You definitely want your heels on one line. And go longer front to back. So walk your front foot about an inch closer to the front edge of your mat, Greg. He's got a really strong and stable warrior two. He's guiding his knee forward over his ankle. I'm going to keep working your knee a little bit to the left, so like over the fourth toe, versus letting it roll inward. Now tighten up the back leg like crazy. Strong, straight back leg. And a little bit of daylight in the arch of your back foot. Now use your eyes. Keep them on one point. Eyes over your front hand. Keep your back arm lifted to shoulder height. And even in the middle of all this effort and challenge, there's ease through your breath, your gaze. Breathe in. Exhale, extended side angle. Bend your front elbow, bring your forearm to your knee. Extend your left arm straight up to the sky to start. Now drop your hips another inch, Greg. One more breath. Now reach your top arm forward to the front of your mat, palm face down. You've got to really lift the front of your pelvis up. Drop your tailbone heavy. And then in every out breath, start to spiral your belly and your chest toward the left side of the room, maybe even up to the ceiling a little bit. 
Keep watching your front knee. Don't let it cave inward. Couple more breaths in. Out. One more big breath in. Step to downward facing dog. Excellent work. Breathe in. How you doing, Greg? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Breathe out. Come back to tabletop. Extend your left leg straight back. Now drop down to your right forearm. Make a claw with your left hand. Bend your upper knee and send your upper leg to the right. Keep your belly engaged. Spread your toes apart evenly. And work your hands and your feet. They're like access points into your core. You can circle the ankle, relax your head, belly in, belly in. A little bit lighter on the bottom hand. Breathe in. Open up a little bit more. Foot over to the left more, or to the right more. And now extend your left leg straight back. Come back up onto your palms. Curl your right toes under, belly in, press back, three-legged dog. Huge breath in. Get a little longer, lift your leg higher, dorsiflex your foot, and step through to crescent lunge. Lower your back knee down gently, gently. Sweep your arms up over your head. Make your palms face each other, front of the pelvis up, and curl all back five toes under. Take one more big breath in, long and strong. Prayer twist to your left on an exhalation. Listen for your breath as a measure of whether you're over-efforting or holding back a bit. Use your in-breath to pull your thumb knuckles down the center of your sternum and your out-breath to twist. You can stay right with this, or you can play with your strength on this side. Maybe you hover your back toes off of the floor. Just be in the listening, and know that at any time in any pose, you may need to add or subtract, to dial it up, modify down. There's nothing that ever stays perfectly static. Lift your back thigh away from your mat if it's up. Take one more round of breath in. Twist, gently bring your back knee down to the floor if it's lifted. Complete your crescent, reach your arms up over your head. Give me a hint of a smile, big breath in. Downward facing dog. Inhale. Exhale out, step your left foot forward into warrior two. You may need to open up your back foot just a little bit. So if you're looking at a clock, it's probably somewhere closer to 3 o'clock than 2 o'clock. Nudging your front knee forward directly above your ankle. And if you're not feeling anything or your mind is starting to drift, then you've got some more work to do. You might need to go an inch longer. I don't know. Is Greg looking comfortable here? I think so. Walk your foot a couple inches forward. That's it, that's it. Now retract your upper arm bones in the socket. And keep your arms taut, but not overextending. Breathe in. Bend your front elbow, extended side angle. Reach your right arm straight up to the ceiling to start. Drop your hips another inch. Now reach your top arm toward the front of the mat, palm face down, and you're working to stack your joints on a vertical plane. So guiding your right hip over your left, kind of rotate your left sit bone under, get a good stretch across your right hip flexor, keep your right leg strong and straight, unbunch your toes, now move your shoulder blades into the spine line, and get some more length from your left shoulder to your left ear a few more counts. Breathe in, open twist, breathe out. Take one more breath in, downward facing dog. Excellent work. We're in the vitality part of the series here. Inhale, exhale. 
Bring your knees back down to the mat. Let's think of a modified side plank. Keep your left knee on the floor. And take side plank with your left hand down. And peel everything open. Reach your right arm up to the sky. You can have your right toes on the floor like Greg is doing with your right arm up to the sky. You can make a claw with your left hand. You might even float your right leg up. The sides of your body, your obliques, your belly. Take all of the energy up. Stay as light in your bottom hand as possible. So there's a little bit of softness in your left shoulder and elbow joint. Take one more breath in. Come back to tabletop. Do a cat cow. Drop your belly. Cow pose. Inhale, look up. Exhale, belly in, look down. And come to center and take side plank on the left. Just listen for your breath and Pay close attention. How does this side feel relative to the other side? Usually we've got a little more freedom on one side, a little more strength on the other side. This practice is designed to balance everything out and help you see where your postural habits are, where your weaknesses are, where your strengths are. A couple more breaths. A little bit lighter in your bottom hand, Greg, so your fingers aren't turning a different color. Take one more breath in. Press back to downward facing dog. Inhale. Exhale. Maybe it's time to wipe the sweat off the brow. It's always a good sign that something's happening. Something is starting to shift. From downward facing dog, Walk up to the front of your mat. Utkatasana, chair pose. Bring your feet together. Now take a look at your toes before you go anywhere. Bring the tops of your feet into view. You want to see all ten toes spread evenly. Drop your bum another inch. Bring your palms to heart center. Breathe in. Prayer twist to your right. Take your left elbow past your right thigh. Now keep studying your feet. And move a little bit left and right so that you can distribute your weight evenly in each leg. Now what happens is, is the left hip wants to swing out a little bit. So guide your left hip crease back. Again, 80% of the weight in the center of each heel. Drop your hips a little lower and get a little space between your thighs and your belly. Neutral pelvis. Right elbow, move it forward. Soft, calm expression in your face, five. Four, go into center line. Belly up, three, two, twist. Bring your hands to the floor. Separate your feet, hip distance, maybe a little wider. Bend your knees a lot. Catch on to your big toes with your peace fingers and thumb. Make your palms face each other. Lengthen your spine to the front of the studio and bow forward. Press your sacrum up to the ceiling like you've got an imaginary hand pressing into your sacrum. Resist that. Contract your bicep muscles and your quadricep muscles like you're doing an upside down pull up. Send the back of your head down and keep working your hands forward, forward. Breathe in. I'm going to take a load off. Breathe out. Let go of your toes. Walk your feet together. Bend your knees. Come right back into Utkatasana, chair pose. Bring your palms to heart center. Prayer twist to your left. Do some mining. Dig down into earth with your feet. Explore from the mound of the big toe, across to the baby toe, the center of each heel. Inner ankles go back, outer ankles down. And keep dropping hips down. Belly up and away from your thighs. You're in a little bit of tug of war. You're trying to get as low as you can in your hips, high as you can in your chest. More like a tug of love. A few more counts. Moving to the beat of your breath. Lengthen as you breathe in. 
twist as you breathe out. One more big, big breath in. Twist and bring your hands to the floor. Take your feet wide. Gorilla Asana. You gotta bend your knees quite a bit. You wanna slide your feet on top of your palms. And get up there with your toes, all the way up to past the creases of your wrists. Yes, yeah, beautiful, Greg. Now lengthen your spine to the front of the studio and bow forward. Wiggle your toes around a little bit. Give your wrists a massage with your toes. An attempt to pull your hands out, but don't let them come out with your feet. You can start to straighten your legs a little by little. Inhale. Lean into it, exhale. Now come to a low wide-legged squat. Greg is already on his way there. And I'll demo it facing you. So you have your feet turned out slightly. And take your triceps to your inner thighs. Bring your palms to heart center. Now notice how I'm kind of rounding here. Pull your shoulders into the spine line. Drop your tailbone and lift the front of your pelvis up. It's a very active hip opener. A great way to get some more length in your spine. You can meditate your eyes on one point. So good to build some back body strength. You spend so much time hunched over screens, steering wheels, put the back of your skull up to the ceiling. Take one more breath in. And do this, just step back to downward facing dog. And perhaps by this point in class, downward facing dog is feeling a little bit better, a little more easeful. And that happens by staying committed to your gaze and your breath. You can always take child's pose if that's not happening. From downward facing dog, look forward and walk up to the front of your mat. Just do a couple balancing poses and then we're gonna work our way down. So walk your feet together, stand up, bend your knees and take cactus arms. Eagle pose, right side. Wrap your right leg over your left and your right arm under your left. And as Greg's doing, you can catch your shoulders. If you need a little more support, you can always put a block under your bottom foot. Something to press into. Move your shoulder blades to the spine line. Stack your shoulders over your hips. Drop your tailbone a little closer and pull everything into the midline like a tourniquet. Breathe in. Breathe out. Keep your eyes steady. Inhale, unwrap everything and come into the other side on your out breath. Left leg over, left arm under. You might need to swivel your hips a little bit, left and right, so that you can find center. Sometimes it takes moving your body around in space a little bit to discover where center is. And contract your front ribs in and breathe into your mid back. Calm, steady, patient, ready for anything. It's the spirit of an eagle, Garudasana. One more full breath in. Sit a little bit lower, breathe out. Unwrap your legs, bring your feet together, sweep up, extended mountain pose. Bring your palms to heart center. Take a clearing breath in. Exhale it out. Rikshas in a tree pose, balance on your left leg. Bring the bottom of your right foot to your inner left thigh. Or you could modify, you could bring an arch of your right foot to your calf muscle or even make a kickstand. Start with your palms together, thumbs to heart center. And get stable, pull everything in. And receive your lifted foot with your inner thigh or calf. Make adjustments as needed. When you tip out of a pose, you don't make any story about it, you just come right back in. So forgiving practice that way, you just begin again. Take one more breath here, Greg. Inhale. Exhale. And bring your upper foot to the floor and switch sides. 
see what's going on on this side and make it 100% okay. down, breathe into the mid back, press down into earth, pull into the center line, lift, and then from there you can create expression. You could even reach your arms up over your head if you'd like to do that, or you could stay right here. Take one more breath in, both feet to the floor. Walk up to the front of your mat if you're not already there. Arms by your side. Inhale, sweep up. Exhale, bow forward. Halfway lift. Step to downward facing dog. Right foot forward, warrior two. And go long, like all the way to the front edge of your mat with your front foot, back edge of your mat with your back foot. Now straighten your legs to set up the Trikonasana triangle pose. As you breathe out, pull your right hip, hip, hip flexor back. And then land your right hand to the outside of your right shin on the floor or a block or your shin, left arm up to the sky. Activate your feet, spread every toe out across your mat. Like a couple of power lines, pull up through your inner thighs. Keep working your right hip flexor back. You get as long as you can through both sides of your, your lateral body. Get more space from your right hip to your right armpit. Spread out your fingers. Bring some sunshine into the pose. Breathe in. Breathe out. Come back to warrior two. Finish it. Gaze past your front hand. Spin your front palm. Reverse your warrior. Step back to downward facing dog. Windmill your arms. Left foot forward, warrior two. Let's go a little slower on this side of the transition, Greg. So straighten your legs. And before you bring your left hand to the floor or block, pull your left hip crease back and reach your left fingertips to the, the wall in front of you. Straighten your legs and reach, reach, reach. And when you can't reach anymore, drop your left hand and that's where it lands. It might be higher than you want it to. Reach your right arm up to the sky. Spread your toes out across your mat. And press like crazy through your front big toe mat. You want to be rolling to the outside of your foot. Front kneecap points straight ahead. Now add some breath. Breathe life into your hands, into your feet. Take your right shoulder blade back to the wall behind you. Breathe in. Really nice. Breathe out. And come back to warrior two. Spin your front palm. Reverse your warrior. Step to downward facing dog. Giant breath in, exhale, breathe out. Come to tabletop, right? Now find neutral pelvis first. Make sure your knees are right under your hips, shoulders over your wrists, belly engaged. Neutral pelvis. Now extend your right arm forward and your left leg back. And notice how the low back wants to hammock a little bit, engage the knee on a bundle, belly the spine. Tighten up your back leg and spin the baby toe edge of your right foot toward the floor. Keep reaching long with your right fingertips to the front of the, the mat. And stay with this. Keep breathing. Get long and at the same time maintain the integration by pulling in from skin to muscle to bone. Take one more breath. Now slowly bring your elbow to your knee and curl your upper back around. Squeeze, squeeze. No momentum. Now extend it back out without dumping in your low back. Big stretch. We'll do two more like that. Pull and squeeze. Inhale, extend. Back foot flexed. One more time. Exhale, squeeze. Extend, hold, hold, hold. Hand down, knee down. Do a cow face pose. Drop your belly, look up, breath in. A relief for the spine. Exhale, round. 
Come back to neutral and we'll get the other side. Extend your right leg back, left leg forward. Or your right leg back, left arm forward, that's it. Now it's though Greg is pressing into an imaginary column into the hand and kicking his left heel or right heel straight back toward the wall. Get a little bit longer, belly in. Exhale, knee to nose, squeeze, pull in, pull in, hold, hold, hold. Inhale, extend. Exhale, pull in, squeeze. One more time, extend. Pull in, squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. Last time, extend. Bring your hand down, your knee down, and drop your belly, look up, curl your toes under. Press back to downward facing dog. Inhale. Exhale. Bring your knees to the mat for camel pose. And take a block, put it between your thighs, Greg. You got a good side view. So you notice how he's got his shoulders stacked above his hips, hips over knees. Bring your hands to your low back, your palms to your low back. Now work your elbows toward the midline. Drop your tailbone straight down toward the floor. I'm going to demo this also so you can see a couple of options that you have. You can keep your hands to your low back like Greg is doing. Get into the thoracic spine. Lift it up toward the ceiling. Squeeze your block so your pelvis stays neutral. If you can keep your hips directly above your knees, you can reach for your heels. But if you start to go back, you've got to work your hips forward. Heart up, so I'm getting into the upper region of my spine, not my low back. Decompress your low back. Maybe open up your throat, breathe in. Exhale, from your core strength, hands to your low back, rise up to downward facing dog. If you lose the block, take a breath in. Exhale out. You bring your knees to your mat, just roll over onto your back. Roll over onto your back to set up for bridge pose. You can face either way. Now take a look right and left at your heels and make sure that your feet are on 12 o'clock. So you might need to kick your heels out away from each other just a little bit. Knees directly above your heels. On an inhalation, press your hips up off of the floor. And walk your shoulder blades in. Go ahead and keep your palms on the floor, Greg. Just flatten your hands. Spin your inner thighs toward each other and your tailbone toward the back of your knees. Now, lift your right leg straight up to the ceiling. Press through your left foot. Lift it a little higher. Now lower your hips to a hover. Keep your leg lifted. Lift it up. Good back body strength. Lower. Lift up, exhale, lower, two more times. Lift, lower, one more time. Lift, hold, 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 stay lifted. Bring your foot to the floor and switch sides. Left leg go up, squeeze your glutes, left leg up, and lower to a hover. Lift, press through your foot, awesome, lower. Lift up. Lower. One more time, lift, stay there. Bring your foot to the floor. Now lift your hips another inch, and now start to shimmy your shoulder blades toward each other underneath you. Greg uses a strap on this one. So you're gonna interlace your hands underneath you or use two ends of a towel. If you're interlacing your hands, make your palms meet and squeeze your triceps into the midline. Lift your chin away from your chest. You get an opening across your pectorals. Keep working your knees in toward each other. Five more counts. Four. Three. Lift up a little higher, too. And slowly come back down. Bring the bottoms of your feet together. Supta Baddha Konasana. You can place your left hand on your heart, your right on your belly. You can have your eyes open or closed. Press your feet together and deepen your breath, exaggerating your in-breaths. Like you're filling up a helium balloon, like an accordion. And as you breathe out,
drop every bone into gravity, into earth. And stretch everything out. Reach your arms up over your head. Extend your legs long. Again, spread out your fingers, wiggle your toes. Maybe massage the back of your head, roll your head side to side. Now draw your right knee into your chest. Give it a squeeze in. Lift your left heel to a hover. Just a modified low back stretch. You can keep your head down like Greg is doing, or you could bring your forehead to your knee for a little more. Stretch across your low back and switch sides. Okay, lie down, hug your knees into your chest. And rock and roll three or four times. And rise up into Navasana, both pose for balance. Now bring your hands behind you, just to show a modified, bring your fingertips on the floor. I'll give you a couple of options. So this is one variation like break, or you can bring your hands to your outer thighs. What you want to do is get long from your tailbone to your mid-back. And stay here, hold for 10. Nine, lift it here. Eight, seven, six, five, keep breathing, no strain, four, three. Two, and lie down onto your back. Hug your knees into your chest. And rock and roll three or four times and make your way to downward facing dog. You can roll over your ankles and step back to get there. You can swing your legs around. However you get there works. Right side half pigeon. Bring your right knee up behind your right wrist joint and walk your right foot a little bit to the left edge of your mat. Setup is really important. If your right hip is off the floor, you want to put a block or maybe a rolled up towel under your hip so it's not just floating in midair. Extend your left leg long and move it toward the center of your mat. Then all five toenails press into the floor or you can curl your five toes under. Let your forehead landed on something, one fist on top of the other works. You're going to hold here for a good eight breaths. And put all of your attention on your breath. Disrupt the drift of your mind. You start wandering off into the future or drifting back into the past. Come right into the now, one breath at a time. Study those pockets of resistance in your physical body, in your hips, maybe your shoulders, your jaw. And breathe, breathe into those spaces. And every exhalation get heavier and heavier and heavier. On every inhalation, invite in more space. Every inhalation, you breathe in new life. Every exhalation, you breathe out anything that isn't serving you. Just take one more breath in. Exhale out. And lift your chest, walk your hands back toward your hips. And make your way back to downward facing dog. You can take a three-legged dog and reach your right leg up to the ceiling. You can circle your ankle around a little bit. Pedal your feet in place. And set up on the left side, half pigeon. You might have a little more flexibility on this side, a little less. Study it. Don't judge it. Always, always come into the practice with the mindset that you are perfect and complete as you are. 
And you want to let the practice meet you where you are. You're not trying to fix anything or do anything right. There's nothing wrong. But get settled. And then once you've found your place physically, commit to it. So give up any, just be able to discern when you're fidgeting or whether it's an intentional reason to move or adjust something. Spin your inner back thigh toward the ceiling. Put your mind's eye on your left sit bone and guide it back toward your right heel and guide your front right hip bone toward the floor. Give yourself over to everything that's coming up and use it as an opportunity for whatever is coming up that doesn't need to be here to give it up. Practice is about clearing your space and creating space for something new. A few more counts. One more deep breath in. Breath out. To your final downward facing dog in practice. Make your way back into your three legged dog. If you pedal it out a little bit. And then step through to a seat. Extend your legs long out in front of you. And sit up really tall. Bend your knees a lot. Press your heels into the floor. Locate your sit bones. Reach your arms up toward the ceiling. Breathe in and slowly bow over your legs. Work your belly toward your thighs. Deepen the crease in your hips. Your hands, they land either on the outer edges of your shins or your feet like Greg is doing. And now work your breath to create more length in the back of your hamstrings and in your low back. Breathe in, tighten up your quadriceps. Breathe out, keep a little bit of that dog tilt in your tailbone. Surrender your hamstrings a bit. Little gentle, gentle micro tears so that you create length and strength. And slowly rise up. And one vertebrae at a time, round your low back and lower your way all the way down onto your back. Send your legs up in the air. You can put a block, just put a block under your low back for Viparita Karani, waterfall pose. This is a great one to do against the wall too, especially if you've been on your feet all day. Legs up in the air. It's a very passive inversion. So allow your palms to spin open. Keep your eyes on your big toenails. Five bones settle back in the hip socket. You've got the help of gravity. Does that work? Reset. Reset. Recenter. <laughs> if you have a partner, they can massage your feet here. It's good. Drop everything and acknowledge yourself for showing up. It's not easy to practice at home. I know. I miss practicing in the studio too. And here you are. You committed to your practice. You made it through. And it's perfect. Thumbs up. Great says thumbs up. And hug your knees into your chest. And get your block out of the way. And move it off to the side. Hug your knees into your chest. Now extend your right leg long toward the front of your mat and draw your left knee into your chest. Give it a good squeeze. Take your knee across for a supine twist. Extend your arms out into a capital T. 
You want to press your left shoulder blade into your mat. Big breaths. Get down into your core, your organs. Go deep. Beyond your skin, beyond your muscle, beyond your bones. Breathe way down into your organs, your kidneys. And come back to center. Give your right knee a squeeze. Extend it. Hug your, yeah, your right knee to your chest now. Left leg long. We'll take it across. Supine twist. Guiding his left shoulder blade into the floor. No force, no force. And come to center, hug your knees into your chest, bring your forehead to your knees. Curl into a tight little ball, squeeze everything in. And extend everything out into Shavasana. So set yourself up powerfully for a, a good deep rest. Ankles, let them flop open to the corners of your mat. Maybe a towel over your eyes. Arms long by your side, lower than the level of your heart with your palms face up. Through your nose, deep, deep breath in. Open your mouth. Breathe out, rest, relax your feet, your ankles, your jaw. Just come into your natural rhythm of breath. And as thoughts come up, and they will, send them on their way and come right back to your breath. Take a deep, deep breath in. Empty out. Bring a little movement to your fingers and your toes. You can rock your head gently side to side. And bring one knee at a time into your belly and roll over onto your favorite side. And curl up into a little ball. And on your next inhalation, press up to a seat. And we'll both face the camera. You can sit cross-legged like Greg is doing, or maybe Virasana, with your knees together and calves outside your, your thighs on a block. <clears throat> and sit up nice and tall, relax your shoulders. Bring your palms to heart center, thumb knuckles to heart. And again, acknowledge yourself for showing up. Take something useful from this practice and share it with those around you. We'll finish with one arm. Um, start with the breath in. Clear it out. Inhale for arm. Um. Center, breathe in, and we bow and say, Namaste, Namaste, everybody. Thank you, Greg. Thank you, Jiva Yoga community, for showing up. A little fist bump. 
And keep coming back to this YouTube channel. We'll have more classes for you. Um, power classes, yin classes, kundalini. So check it out. Be well, and we'll see you soon. Thank you.